The general public doesn't realize that even though the Final Four basketball championship is worth a billion dollars a year, a billion dollars comes into the coffers of the NCAA, the public doesn't realize that 88% goes back out and it's given back to Division I institutions. And where does that money end up? It ends up in the back pocket of coaches who are paid astronomical salaries. Why should they be paid more than the, the most experienced educators at a university? What kind of value system does that reflect when that happens? Vermont is uh, an exception, but in virtually all of the states, the top paid public employee is either a football coach or a hockey coach at the state university. And, and that just uh, reflects some pretty skewed priorities. So it's so out of whack uh, when you have the highest paid public employee in many states being a college football coach. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's really a, a messed up system. A public institution should not be play, paying a middle manager, which is what a football coach is. Um, four to five million dollars more than the university president. It is just ludicrous. Now, many university presidents make a great amount of money. Many professors on campus make well over a million dollars. I'm not saying that coaches would go to the poorhouse, but when we're starting to pay coaches 10, 12, 13 million dollars, and we're paying strength coaches, assistant to assistant coaches, six-figure salaries, we have to ask ourselves, what are our real values? I'm from Durham, right? Um, grew up playing basketball on Duke's campus, love Coach K to death, but the amount of money that he makes, it just doesn't make sense. Coaches get paid a fortune. Uh, they get paid as much, almost as much, and in fact, if you include all the perquisites, uh, probably as much as the, the, the coaches get in the NBA and the NFL, even though the NBA and the NFL earn three to seven times as much revenue as, as the top college teams do. So that it doesn't make any sense, uh, but it's the coaches and it's the athletic directors who hire the coaches and the conference commissioners who are hired by the athletic directors who run the NCAA. Uh, and it's not in the, therefore it's not in the NCAA's interest to, to bring about real reform. Coaching salaries for football and men's basketball, I, I think it's fair to say are outrageous. Um, people getting $5 million uh, and up uh, when the university president, you know, makes a 10th of that. Um, and, and that sends a message, you know, that the most important person here uh, is the football coach. There is a flattening on the curve in terms of coach salaries that we redistribute some of that money to coaching salaries, you know, for our women coaches, or our female coaches, you know, because certainly they deserve it. Theoretically, this is a nonprofit organization that is supposed to be based on education and broad based athletic opportunities, top level athletic opportunities. But, but yet, the spending in college athletics on the few, the few coaches and the few sports has quadrupled in the past 10 years. Uh, in fact, spending on male sports since the enforcement of Title IX has gone up almost 500% uh, than, uh, than it was before. So the problem is not that there is not enough money, it's where we're choosing to spend the money. And we're primarily spending that money on coaches' salaries and facilities. We could do in terms of secondary education, if we took half of some of these coaches' salaries and paid teachers in elementary schools, or teachers in junior high schools. They do not need to be, nor do they deserve to be, the highest paid public employee in a state. These athletes are not only generating money for their athletic department or huge coaches' salaries, facilities, and all the other things, nothing that you see uh, at a school like Ohio State, just up the road from where I am right now, it is generated by the coach. It is generated by the athlete. Nobody is showing up to watch the coach on Saturday stand in the middle of a field. 